Um, so, I, um, um, as Gary said, I am the uh, director of property for um, for Rolls Royce. Um, you know, probably uh, half of you in the audience thinking that's got something to do with cars, but we sold the car business in 1973, which is a little while ago. Um, so our main businesses are around um, aero engines, both civil and defence. We also have a significant marine business and a diesel engine business. Um, we're much more a multinational, I suspect most people in the room would think about us. We've got 343 sites um, across 43 countries. So, and we've almost, almost got as many German employees as we've got British employees. So, nip and talk at this, at this point in time. What I wanted to talk to you today about recognising this as mainly a facilities management audience, and I am not <laughs> A facilities manager, or maybe I've become a facilities manager, but I'm not a facilities manager background. What I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about is how I see the world in which I operate, how we within the property team in uh, Rolls Royce communicate um, using the business language understood by the business leaders and the CFO. And also, why is it that FM gets a hammer and a kick in every year when it comes to budget reviews? And I'm in the middle of mine just now. Why is it? Why does that happen again and again and again? And what is it we can do to stop that, you know, a race to the bottom in terms, in terms of the, the continuing um, budget rig, which I'm sure you all experience every year. So, um, first thing I just wanted to do was sort of go right up to the, to the highest level and talk about um, macroeconomics. And this, this chart shows um, a, the GDP across the global economy since, since 1980. And generally, as you'll see, there, there has been a lot of uh, disruption in the, la in the last 10 years. But effectively, developing a, a, a advanced economies, as it's got here, developed economies, are pretty well stagnant round about 2% growth. When I started my career 20 odd years ago, I used to get things called pay rises. I don't know if anybody remembers any of those. You know, and, and, uh, you, know you, paid a, you paid a mortgage and that usually was about 5 or 6%, but one year it was 14%. Um, so, so the world has very much changed, and in particularly in develop, developed countries. If you're marketing, and we mainly market, because we mainly mar market capital goods, we're mainly selling into developed economies, you, you are actually in a position where um, the amount of growth in established markets is pretty well capped. Now, that's completely different if you're in a, you know, a, a media or technolo technology um, a business. Now, we're in a technology business, but it's very much a capital goods long-term, fairly steady um, marketplace, which effectively means the top line is difficult to grow. You can't grow it with market. So what we're seeing is um, throughout the developed economies, companies are, are, can only grow by competing with each other. In other words, taking market share from competitors. And they can only do that primarily because the, the price isn't rising, we're only getting effectively inflation or subinflation growth. What, what, what we're having to do is um, compete on cost. And I'm sure I'm not the only person in the room that's seeing this phenomenon, but this is, this is not, as far as I can see, not going to stop anytime soon. So that's why the, all the focus, and I had a lot of talk this morning, is about cost and cost reduction and I think we've just got to get used to it. That, that is the state that, that we're going to be in unless you move into, into, into new markets. That essentially, and I, I apologise for being very simplistic about this, but um, I'll, I'll give you a story as to why you have to be a little bit simplistic. But there are only two types of growth. There's only variable costs and fixed costs. And again, if you think about this cost pressure coming down within these, within these large companies, if everything follows through logically, variable costs should vary. In other words, 
as, as the, um, the volumes grow or they shrink, depending on, on your business, variable costs move up and down. So therefore, the real pressure is on fixed costs. And so we go from an, you know, an economic situation up here where there's pressure on cost, but in actual fact, it comes down to, to, act, to fixed costs is, is the, the main thing that you need to look at. Now, what, why I say this is very simplistic, but just within the last few weeks, we've had a lot of debate about fixed costs within Rolls-Royce. And I would say I've had from our finance department four different versions of what fixed costs actually are. Um, I've got the Wikipedia version, which is the one I always refer to, but, but you know, do we actually understand what, what, what fixed costs um, are? And, and I'll just describe that to you what, um, what we do within Rolls-Royce that may vary within your company. But certainly the most important thing is that if the model, if the capitalist model works, then as you grow, variable costs should grow, hopefully a little bit less than you grow, and, it, and uh, as you shrink, What's, what's normal is there's a lag between, between the, the reduction variable cost and not. But the most important thing is fixed cost. And why is it important to us? And the important to us is that property makes up a significant portion of, of fixed cost. So just to talk about, um, uh, th this is a slide that uh, I've taken most of the numbers off because um, I didn't want anybody to take any photographs of it um, uh, because it's not it would be very interesting to our analyst, but to just talk through, um, we're a £14 billion pound company, manufacturing company, so the textbooks fit us perfectly, you know, we've got raw goods and we, we change raw goods and then we sell that product, etc. But our fixed costs, you would think of that in a company like that, a lot of our costs would be variable in terms of raw materials, in terms of production matters. But we actually have total fixed costs of 4.7 billion, so approximately one third of our um, of our total costs are fixed, and they basically break down broadly along these these pies. The first one is employee costs, and you you might say, but surely in a manufacturing business, as you grow, you take on more more employees, and as you shrink, you don't. Well, in reality, no, because we've got 54,000 employees. Manufacturing business, we've got 34,000 indirect employees. That's office workers. So we are, prim we are mainly actually an office-based white-collar organization. And those are regarded as fixed costs. You might be able to vary them, but certainly anybody that's got employees in the UK will know you can't vary them that fast. So um, a employee cost is a, is a big chunk. IT and property make up um, a, a significant proportion, and then the remainder, the remainder are, are various other things <coughs> from travel through to fees, um, e even subcontract employees. But of that, of that total um, fixed cost, where the focus is, certainly my company is on reducing that fixed cost significantly, um, 420 million pound per annum is, is in property. So therefore, property becomes a very, very um, important uh, factor and a discussion point in a upboard level. Sorry. So how does that? This this shows just how our um, our costs um, break down, and, and broadly speaking, our costs break down into into thirds. Okay. So it's about a third of rents and property taxes. As a manufacturing company, we still have a lot of freehold property, but all of our offices, all of our warehouses are, are leased, and we actually have some factories that are leased as well. So uh, with changes in accounting regulations, we also expect the amount of leased property to increase because we'll probably move away from operating leases to finance leases over the next, next few years. Facilities management and utilities have been uh, cheek by jowl for years, for, the, you know, for probably four or five years. Um, but I'll be honest, um, two years ago utilities, our utility bill was higher than our facilities ma management costs. But it's gone the other way because the utilities guys are fantastic at reducing costs. You know, I give the, I've got a very small team, 
I give them a relatively small capital budget and they, have, they produce fantastic IRRs. The, the problem we've got really is in terms of facilities management because facilities management is still predominantly labour arbitrage and labour arbitrage um, a, a increases in cost rather than standing still. Got question. question? Yeah, no, go for it. Um, on, the facility, on the utility side, is yep. it of the, the biggest IRRs coming out of consumption reduction or rate reduction or investment in new efficient? Yeah, so, 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 so basically we have got, we've got three major programmes. One is encouragement of reduction of consumption. Yeah. And, and that's two elements. It's got pure consumption and secondly it's got a switch to uh, a non-greenhouse gases. Um, a secondly, it is then hearts and minds, if I can call it like that, switching off lights. And third is then the investment. Um, we've got a fourth factor called weather, yeah. um, which does actually have a surprisingly big factor. By far the most dominant um, factor in our reduction on energy has come through investment. Investment in LEDs, uh, variable speed drives, um, insulation. Insulation is a marvellous um, return on. Uh, and we still have a lot of steam, which is a dreadful medium, by the way. Um, so even doing things like steam leaks produces significant returns. Em employees, sorry, go on down. We do a little bit of self-generation, but we mainly buy in the market. Um, and we are actually, we, one of our businesses produces CHP plants. So a um, recently acquired business. So we, we do have some CHP plants and we'll be putting more of, effectively putting microgrids into our, into our own areas. Um, we still have quite a large percentage expenditure in employees. I only have 70 employees directly within the, within the property and facilities team, but we still have quite a lot of blue collar because we've got uh, unionised um, locations where I still have in-house in -house labour, so that makes up 9%. And portfolio basically is everything else, fees, demolition, technical advisors, all, all of that, that, that type of thing. But specifically, if you, if you then break down in annual budgeting, how variable are these, these particular elements? And this is about annual budgeting, not, not long-term budgeting. Um, and rent is pretty well, rent and property taxes you're stuck with. You know, you've agreed in some shape or form to take a 3, 5, 15, 25, 125 year lease, depending on, on the nature of the property. So in annual budgeting terms, when it, when it comes to, you need to take in X percent out, <coughs> then rent, very difficult, very difficult to move. Um, so, so our strategy for that is very much about um, a focusing. Strategy being a word about long-term planning, not annual accounting. It's all about footprint <coughs> reduction. Facilities management, how variable is it? It's variable a little bit, but not as much as, uh, as you'd like. And, 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 and everybody in the audience knows that. But is it a short-term target? Yeah, it's, it's the one. It's the one that uh, everybody points to. And I'm, uh, I'm in my 10th year in Rolls-Royce. I'm in my 10th year of having to cut FM budgets. Now, that's a race to the bottom. Uh, you know, I, um, I worry, when I go to bed at night, I worry about one thing, and that's uh, you know, something in facility management going wrong and killing somebody. Um, I, I, you know, in our company, we've had two fatalities this year. Um, one of which was directly related to facilities management item. That's, that's not good. It's just not good that, that you're, you're, you're in that, that, that part position. So you, um, you, need, um, a, you, you need to stop doing this annual cull of, of facilities management. Utilities is highly variable because lo logically it should actually be a variable cost. But in, a, in actual fact, when you, when you look at short-term targets, it's actually very, very difficult to do. Uh, and although, you know, a typical IRR of an, of, of an investment in energy is 33%, that basically means it pays back in three years. It also has, a, you know, a, a capex element. So when you're looking at cash in year, and increasingly we look at cash in year, it becomes, becomes a real difficulty. Um, employees, how variable? Very, very limited in terms of, um, and especially the m fewer you have in house, then the more limited that, that becomes. And then port portfolio costs, what's next? 
you know, I can get rid of a few consultants here or there, but then really what am I doing? I'm just cutting off my nose to spite my face because I'm not, look, not looking at the long term. So when we, when we look at annual budgeting, when you look at annual budgeting, and you understand the pressure that's coming all the way from, from uh, developed products, why is it FM gets hit every year? Well, I've just explained why it gets hit every year. Because the most, there's no growth, focus on cost, it's fixed cost, and the most variable, the one you can hit uh, every year easily is FM. But as I said, that's a, that's a race to the bottom. So what, what have we tried to do differently? So what we're trying to do is focus on the true demand, which is the demand for footprint, the amount of square feet, square meters, whatever, whatever metric, what metric you want to do. And although we are a um, growing business, you know, our production in our main, um, in our main uh, business will double between 2013 and 2020, we are actually going, uh, we are um, taking 20% out of our footprint globally. We're halfway through, as this chart will indicate, halfway through that, that process. It's involved just over a billion pounds worth of investment, but it'll take something like 450 million pounds per annum out of our, out of our fixed costs, our operating costs. So it, it, it is very much the thing to do. You don't do this alone. Um, this is where you actually can begin um, as a property or facility function to get directly involved with the board or the executive in talking about not just enabling strategy, but actually driving that strategy because this is absolutely core to our, our, our company's um, future. But it's tough, you know, you know it's, a, it's a lot of work. We have probably somewhere in the order of 80 to 90 live projects globally in consolidating properties, closing properties. And I'll be honest, in industrial, in industrial world, it's just not easy. I mean, I've been in two sites in the last, the, the last week, and we're almost in both of those sites at a point where we'll close within 12 months. We're, in both cases, we're in the sixth year of closure. So it's taken that length of time to move products out to the marketplace, change technologies, build new premises, consolidate that aid down, demolish, and then move on. So it's a very, very um, long-term long -term challenge. Um, and uh, you may indicate that, that the yellow dot there is dipping just below the red line. That's because we're getting so close. We start. We started off, we thought we could take the portfolio down by 33, 32% it was. So we targeted 20, thinking our suppose we've left ourselves plenty buffer. Well, we're two thirds of the way through and we're right on that line at this point in time because it's remarkable how many reasons, or you might call them excuses, the individual businesses come, out, come up for, for sticking to that particular piece of, piece of real estate. So, so it's very difficult. The second long-term um, strategy that we really um, need to focus on is as we consolidate an increasing amount of, of, of production into smaller amounts of space, one of the things that does go up is energy intensity. And energy uh, reduction, I, I perceive, is more like a war than a battle because you're constantly, constantly fighting. First of all, we were constantly fighting the oil price in the early years. But then the oil price went off and you, when you think, oh, we're relaxed. But what we're actually seeing is certainly in the developed economies, apart from perhaps one, um, that uh, taxation to pay for renewables and the switch away from GHG is really beginning to hit us. So for instance, in, in my budget, um, a, this, this year I, I take a two and a half million pounds hit purely in the UK purely to do with an extra energy tax being placed on, on, on utilities. Now that's, you know, that, 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 that is a classic fixed cost. There's nothing I can do about it. So I need to offset in that some sort of way. We have a very um, a successful so far energy reduction um, a policy. And um, a, th those, it, it has two, 
two focus, 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 whatever, um, one, one of which is the reduction of pure energy, so the, the, we're targeting a 30% reduction in energy consumption in between 13 and 20, um, um, and secondly a reduction in greenhouse gases uh, by 50% in between 13 and 2025. How do we market that? We actually purely market it within the business in terms of cost. Because you can go in with all starry-eyed or green-eyed, if you will, in terms of, of, of CSR, but that doesn't matter to the uh, hard-nosed manufacturing managers. We purely play it in terms of cost. But I, as I indicated earlier, it's, 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 very, it's very lucrative and uh, uh, very successful. So I just want to leave before I take any questions, just, just one thought, which is if you really want to f um, focus strategically within your business on that cost agenda, it needs to be about footprint. And just as when you're walking across the sand in your bare feet, um, uh, what you don't want to do is to leave deep imprints. You need to leave it light. So you know, think about the, uh, the uh, sustainability the size and the efficiency of those footprints. So I'll finish there and take any questions.